At Cape Kennedy today, the Skylab space station and its Saturn V rocket were moved to an outside launching pad. The three and a half mile trip took six hours. Launch date is the 14th of May. Extremely light trading and falling prices today on the stock. NBC News, Grimes, Iowa. The scheduled launch of the Skylab, Skylab Space Laboratory on May the 14th could be delayed by a strike. Union men operating a ground tracking station at Cape Kennedy went on strike last night. Today they picketed the entrances to the Cape Kennedy Space Fort. All other work toward the launch continued, but space officials say the tracking station is vital to the project. Skylab astronauts Charles Conrad, Paul Weitz, and Joe Kerwin today climbed aboard their spaceship and rehearsed their countdown. The test was a success, and it paved the way for the launching of the Skylab laboratory on the 14th of May and of the astronauts the next day. They'll join up with it in space. At Cape Kennedy next week, two countdowns, at Cape Kennedy tomorrow, two countdowns will start for the launch of the Skylab mission. The space station is scheduled to be launched on Monday. On Tuesday, the astronauts who will work in Skylab will be sent up to dock with the spacecraft. The men will enter Skylab next Wednesday. Two countdowns started today at Cape Kennedy. One countdown is for Skylab, the orbiting space station which will be launched on Monday. The second is for the spacecraft which will carry three astronauts aloft the following day. And on Wednesday next week, the astronauts will enter Skylab and spend four weeks in it. Dual countdowns continue today for the rockets which next week are to launch America's first Skylab space station and its astronauts into Earth orbit. The unmanned Skylab will be launched Monday to be followed on Tuesday by the three-man crew, Charles Pete Conrad, Joseph Kerwin, and Paul Weitz. Then, almost 300 miles above the Earth, the astronauts will link up with the space station and make it their laboratory home for almost a month. How the men will live in that new environment is the subject of this report that we filmed earlier at the Huntsville, Alabama Space Center. Next week, this unusual craft is going to become man's most ambitious home in space. It's a place for three men to live and work for as long as eight weeks at a time. Although it looks like some strange contraption from a science fiction movie, it's really a three-bedroom house complete with a kitchen, a bathroom, a laboratory, an observatory, a factory, and a power station. From this point here, we can get a pretty good idea of how this level of Skylab is arranged. Now, this is the area where some of the medical experiments will be carried out. And back here is the wardroom where the astronauts will eat and relax. Over here through that door is the bathroom, and over to my left there is the bedroom area. There's a hole in the ceiling right here that leads on up to the second level. But you'll notice there aren't any stairs. On a space where there's no gravity, just a slight push on the floor sends you in the direction you want to go. Speaking about the floor, let's take a close-up look at it. It's quite unusual. It's made of lightweight aluminum in the shape of open triangles. And there's a reason for this shape. And right here, it is. In a weightless condition, the astronauts are going to find an orbit. They'd just float around in here unless there was something to hold them down. So on the sole of their sneakers, they've put a triangular metal plate. And when the astronaut wants to stand in one place on the floor, he just fits his shoe into a, an opening in the triangle there. Does a little twist, and he's locked in place. Then when he wants to go on and move around, he twists his foot again, and he's free to do so. By the way, since there's really no up or down, where there's no gravity, of course, the ceiling would be the floor, too. The astronaut could lock himself in place right up there on the ceiling, just the same way, just like that. And then he'd just hang there, head down. You might call this the combination dining room, kitchen, and recreation room for the astronauts. Along the walls uh, there are some of the frozen food lockers that will be stocked with, oh, about a ton of food. That should be more than enough for all three of the manned missions. They'll bring their food over to this table here in a tray that they pull out of the wall over there. And after they've filled it with some of these canned foods from the food lockers, they bring it over here and it locks into place. Now, they don't have to cook any of the food. It's, uh, they, these, these trays have built-in heaters. They just turn them on and the food is heated for them. Over here is something the astronauts insisted on having. It's a shower. 
because with a limited supply of water, they can only take a shower once a week, but in space, that's a big luxury. Here's how it works. They stand here and use this hose to cover themselves with water. They, uh, they only get about three quarters of a gallon for that weekly shower. And then because, of course, things are weightless here, water's floating around, they've got to have some way to collect that water. And here it is. It's a vacuum hose. They use that then to get all the water off and around here. And, of course, while they're in the shower, they've got to keep that water from floating around in the room and getting in other things. So this is what they do. They've got a shower curtain. They just lift it up and put it up and hook it like that. Here's where they wash and shave with the mirror here. And of course, there's a toilet in the bathroom. And it's mounted right on the side of the wall. Of course, in space, uh, since there's, it's totally weightless, uh, there's no gravity, it doesn't matter that it's in the wall. There's no up or down or sideways, so it's perfectly simple to work just uh, that way. All of the human waste will be stored down in here, and actually uh, they're brought back uh, to uh, Earth uh, with the astronauts because the doctors want to study that. They want to find out how a person's body changes when they're away from gravity. This is the bedroom where the astronauts will sleep in Skylab, in little roomettes, three of them here, behind a folding door, works like that. And in here, they literally, uh, their beds hang on the wall in these sort of uh, bedrolls. Zip them down, climb in, and fit themselves into this outer sack and then an inner sack. The reason for all that is to restrain them, of course, in the weightlessness of space. If they lay on a cot, they just float right on up again. So they get into these things, got a pillow for their head, and actually, of course, they don't have any sense of hanging on the wall. Since there is no uh, weight in space, uh, any position does as well as any other. Life aboard Skylab. Three men for four weeks, then three more men for eight weeks, and finally another three men for another eight weeks as America's space program turns its eyes back to Earth. Astronauts Pete Conrad, Joseph Kerwin, and Paul Weitz got their first, uh, got their final medical exams before the Skylab launch next week. The Skylab itself goes up Monday and the crew on Tuesday. Medical experiments are one of the many purposes of this mission, as Morton Dean explains in this report from the Huntsville, Alabama Space Center. This is a bicycle that goes nowhere. It is one of nearly 100 experiments on board the Skylab. Many of the experiments concern with how well the astronauts are getting along physically. Dick, specifically, what will you be looking for with this experiment, with well, the bicycle? We're looking for a general measure of the astronaut's condition and how it changes during the mission. We're looking at the respiratory function and, and how well his muscle endurance is retained, retained and uh, uh, how his heart's operating, it's an overall measure of his condition. This is another one of the important experiments. It's called the lower body negative pressure device. And Dick, that is quite a mouthful. What does it all add up to? Well, this is the way we measure the, the condition of the astronaut's heart and blood vessels throughout the duration of the mission. Every three days, we'll put the men in here. We'll pull a vacuum on them. And this will pool the blood in their legs in the same way that it does here in 1G and give us a way to assess what they would be like here on Earth versus where they are. This chair looks like a medieval torture device, and I suppose to some of the astronauts uh, it really uh, will become one. It is designed to bring the astronauts to the brink of being motion sick. Now, what's the reason for all that, Dick? Well, what purpose? As you know, we've had um, some problem with both our crews and the Russians have had some trouble. Uh, with theirs having what we call vertigo or motion sickness uh, during their space flight. A large number of astronauts have had some form of motion sickness. Right. And this experiment is designed to give us more knowledge into how it affects, how it happens in zero gravity and what its effects are over a long period of time during the space flight to give us more knowledge of how this occurs and how we could do something to reduce its effect. One of the benefits of living and working in a weightless state is that the astronauts will simply be able to push off and float in space. We're doing it a different way, but uh, not quite as easy as the astronauts will have. But you get the idea anyway. 
This is what is called the airlock module, a title that sort of speaks for itself. It is a passageway between the command module and the workshop and the living quarters. But in and of itself, Dick, it is a workshop, too. That's right. It's one of our control centers, main control center for the vehicle. And it's where we go outside. And up there are two experiments that are quite important, the Earth Resources Experiment and the Telescope Control. This is where the Earth resource sensors and cameras are located, utilized for a high but rather sensitive look at the Earth's water systems, weather systems, and crops, among other things. Earth resource is not a new airborne science. Other spacecraft, aircraft, and rockets already involved in such work, taking pictures similar to these. Hopefully, the Skylab sensors will detect intimate details about the patterns of insects as they invade forests, about the early stages of blight in crops. We'll locate and determine the extent of new mineral deposits and likely new feeding areas for large schools of fish, issue warnings concerning the buildup and flow of floodwaters. And over here is the panel that controls the telescope. All of these dials and switches are related to the telescope experiments, which should give the world the most sophisticated and close-up view of the sun, a view unobscured by the Earth's atmosphere. Five television cameras and two TV monitors will enable the crew to see what a telescope will see. Of special interest are the mysterious and spectacular solar flares, which can cause so much disruption of communication systems back here on Earth. Just two days before the completion of the mission, two of the astronauts will walk in space. They will come out to retrieve some of the scientific packages, and Dr. Kerwin will come down to this position, lock his feet in place, hang on, and turn on this cylinder, rolling it in order to retrieve some of the film taken of the sun. Have to unlock this, and out comes the film canister. The astronauts have an awful lot of scientific work to accomplish during the mission, and they themselves doubt whether they'll be able to take advantage of that one day off each week that the schedule grants to the men over the duration of the mission. Morton Dean, CBS News, Huntsville, Alabama. CBS will broadcast a special report for younger viewers called What's Skylab All About? tomorrow at 12.30 p.m., 11.30 a.m. Central Time. The three Skylab astronauts, Charles Conrad, Dr. Joseph Kerwin, and Paul Weitz, underwent lengthy medical examinations today in a prelude to their space adventure that begins next week. Findings made today will be compared with findings made during their 29 days in space. ABC Science Editor Jules Bergman has a report on Skylab. This is what Skylab looks like inside. Big. Bigger than any manned spacecraft ever put into orbit. 25 times the working and living area inside an Apollo command module. Three times the size of Russia's Salyut space station. Skylab is not only the biggest, but by far the most complex object ever put into orbit. The Skylab mission begins with what looks like any previous Saturn V launching. Except that the unmanned Skylab space station takes the place of the third stage rocket. In fact, Skylab is the third stage rocket, with the workshop housed in the empty fuel tank. Once getting into orbit, 270 miles over the Earth, the protective fairings are jettisoned. The Apollo telescope mount, containing six solar telescopes, is deployed by ground controllers, and enormous solar panels to supply the electric power for the telescopes and the space station are unfolded. A day after the space station is put into orbit, the three astronauts are launched in an Apollo command module atop a Saturn I rocket. Eight hours after the launch, they'll dock with the space station, then get their first night's rest, still in Apollo, before activating Skylab. Skylab is so big that it'll take the three astronauts, Pete Conrad, Dr. Joe Kerwin, and Paul White, nearly two days just to get it operating. Conrad will shortly break all endurance records for man in space. Kerwin is the first doctor the U.S. has put into space. White is a Navy fighter pilot on his first space trip. To fight off weightlessness while they're working, pleated sneakers lock into the graded floors. They'll sleep standing up, but there's no up and down in space, in zipper-style sleeping bags. For the first time, they'll have heated meals and frozen foods, from steak to lobster. And to prevent their muscles from getting out of shape while weightless, They'll exercise with a bicycle ergometer while doctors monitor their condition back on Earth. 
During this first one month, they'll shoot scores of thousands of pictures of what happens on the sun and on Earth, hoping to learn more about how man can someday harness its energy and about the Earth's resources. Man has been to the moon six different times on flights lasting up to 12 days, but no one is sure how well man will hold up or how much useful work he can perform on really long space flights. Skylab is the test to determine man's future in space. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News at Cape Kennedy. The three Skylab astronauts got their last big medical checkup today, and the countdown moved ahead smoothly for next Monday's launching of the Skylab Space Laboratory and next Tuesday's launching of the astronauts who will link up with it. NBC News will carry both events live on television and radio. We'll go on the air Monday starting at 1.20 p.m. Eastern Time. At Cape Kennedy, the countdown continues, a countdown to a new phase of American exploration of space called Skylab. Tomorrow, the space laboratory will be launched and go into orbit around the Earth. Then, on Tuesday, astronauts Conrad, Kerwin, and Weitz will be launched. They will link up with Skylab and live and work in it for 28 days, the longest man has ever stayed in space. Jim Hartz reports from Cape Kennedy. It's been almost seven years since they've conducted a double countdown here at Cape Kennedy, getting two rockets ready to go at one time. That was back in the days of Gemini when NASA was first developing the techniques used now for rendezvousing men and machines in orbit around the Earth. On this launch pad, this is the same one that was used for all of the moon flights. The workmen are putting the finishing touches on the Saturn V rocket that will take the Skylab workshop unmanned into orbit tomorrow. A little over a mile and a half away on another pad is the smaller rocket, the Saturn 1B, that will take the crew up to join the laboratory a day later. There have been no major problems on either pad. We did have some concern earlier since this is the first time we've run a dual countdown using Apollo type, uh, type hardware, but we did plan the uh, operation such that no major activity was going on simultaneously on both birds. The operation has been sequenced well, people are not fatigued, and uh, we have had no problems whatsoever. The three men who will fly on the first Skylab mission, Charles Pete Conrad, Dr. Joseph Kerwin, and Commander Paul Weitz, arrived at Cape Kennedy this afternoon for nearly a month, they've been in quarantine at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, isolated from all but a few people in order to minimize the risk of disease. They have passed their final physical examinations and are now ready to go. Conrad, Kerwin, and Weitz will be aloft longer than any men before them, 28 days. And while they may be exhausted, perhaps even unable to walk when they return to Earth next month, today they were eager and fit. Jim Hartz, NBC News, Cape Kennedy. And NBC News will cover the launch of Skylab live on radio and television tomorrow, beginning at 1.20 p.m. Eastern Time.